Hi, my name is Gene Payson and I'm a retired mechanical engineer. I currently live in Sarasota, Florida and I'm a handyman. My father, who's 85 years old, has a pre-existing heart condition and I heard that there's a severe shortage of ventilators so I was really concerned about him because if there's a, a shortage of ventilators they may not put him on a ventilator if if they uh, have other people who are younger and more healthy and don't have pre-existing conditions. So I tried to come up with some ideas as how to get positive airway pressure and also how to do ventilation, so two separate things. And my idea at this point in time is to just spur some ideas that I hopefully can get out into the medical industry. So hopefully a doctor or someone who does equipment in the medical field, something like that, might take these ideas and run with them. They're not completed ideas. I'm not a medical professional. I just come up with some ways of getting positive pressure and being able to regulate that pressure and vacuum so that it can be used in the future. So one of the ways I have it is using a wet dry vac. So a wet, this type of a wet dry vac has a normal vacuum where the, the, the hose plugs into the vacuum side, but you can also take the hose out of the vacuum side and you can put it into the other side for pressure for, for blowing off an area, right? So this would give you positive pressure. Another way to get positive pressure of something that's in, a, in most homes is a hair dryer. So a hair dryer, again, if you could have the cold feature, which this one does, which turns off the heat and you can put it on low, you can get the volume of air that you need regulated using a couple other devices. So the two other devices that you typically need to get the pressure down, because there's too much pressure, is one, you can go on to eBay and you can buy this item right here. It costs $18 and this is basically a rheostat. So this plugs into the wall, it uses 110, and then you plug your device into that. And you can then vary the amount of speed that the, that the motor runs. So what I found is that you need to turn this all the way down and, and have it as low as possible. And whether you're using your hair dryer or you're using your wet dry vac, you're gonna have the same result. There's gonna be too much pressure. So that will greatly reduce the amount of noise, especially out of, out of one of these wet dry vacs. You know how noisy these things can be. So this will not only reduce the noise, but it will also greatly extend the life of the motor. And you're hoping that this is going to be able to run for about a week straight, possibly. And with this reduced uh, RPM of the motor, then that's going to greatly reduce the amount of heat that this produces and extend the life of the motors. So another way that you've got to uh, cut down the airflow is simply buying this $5 valve. And this is just a PVC valve that's used for irrigation. And it's a ball valve, so as it turns, it allows a various amount of air to come through. So then I found that it's easier to put this on the suction side. So I have, this was just a nozzle which connects to the end of the hose. So I cut the nozzle down a little bit, and then this can be placed into the inlet. Then this goes right onto that, and then you can easily get exactly the amount of pressure that you need. Now there's a couple other things that you can do with a wet dry vac. One is that once you pop this off, you probably, if you've used it before, you'd want to clean it out really well. And there's a variety of different filters that can go on here. There is the uh, fan type filters, there's a bag type filter, there's a foam type filter. You can put on a variety of filters if you like. It, it's not super important that, that it's filtered, but it would be nice if it was filtered. I, I left this off just so you can take a look at what it looks like. Another thing is that if you, depending on how you breathe, we'll get into that later, you may want to have moisture introduced into the air that goes into your mouth. It's very easy to do that because you can take some distilled water, pour it into the bottom here, put an elbow on here with a piece of PVC tube. All this is FDA approved, of course, because it's for water. 
and it would go into the water and, and then the air that's being sucked in is going to bubble through the water and it's going to put moisture in the water which is exactly how a CPAP machine works it just is a bubbler basically so you could you could do that as well again with just a couple of dollars worth of parts so then you've got um, then there's a few ways that you need to get the air into your mouth and there's a few ways you can do that one way you can get the air into your mouth is by simply taking a dust mask it, it doesn't necessarily need to be the N95 mask any kind of a dust mask and you could put it over the end here and if you like you can cut it so that it will fit over there a little easier and cut off the rubber bands and things like that and then uh, put a piece of tape on there and then once you have that taped on there it's you simply just put this into your mouth okay <clears throat> so then we could put this on here like this and wrap a piece of tape around there and we've got yeah, or you can hold it with your hand okay so then all you need to do at this point if you need if you have a little bit of trouble breathing and you just need to have some a little bit of positive pressure you can just simply put this in your mouth and breathe in and you can breathe in through your mouth and out through your nose or you can breathe in through your mouth and exhale through your your mouth I found though as you if you exhale through your mouth that the air continues to blow into your mouth and your mouth is going to dry out so you're better off breathing in through your mouth and exhaling through your nose. Now putting the water, distilled water in is going to help that issue, but it's still better to do that. Another way of doing that is to, then they have a lot of these available, is basically the CPAP type of masks. And the CPAP mask uh, has a hose on it and a lot of them have filters attached to them too. You could just stick that in here put a piece of tape on the end and now you've got constant pressure same thing is true with this you just have to get a piece of hose which you can buy separately at a store tape that onto the end of here if you'd like you can either just put on a piece of a dust mask and put it in your mouth you can get a smaller tube put it in your mouth and tape it inside there you can get a mask that's attached to a tube put it in here tape it put it in your mouth there's a variety of different ways not very complicated that you can get the air into your mouth so that's that's how you can get the continuous positive airway pressure going now if you need an actual ventilator the beauty of a wet dry vac is it provides both a vacuum and and pressure as well so you could basically you would be able to put uh, the, this is going to the pressure side this is the vacuum side and it's simple enough to just then take this hose and cut it in half now you've got vacuum and pressure now what you want to do with that is alternate between vacuum and pressure hopefully with one valve it would be nice to just go back and forth at about the rate that someone breathes with a valve so what do you have that you can buy at the, at the hardware store that has two tubes coming in or one tube coming out with one valve? Well, you can get one of these, which is $80 over at one of the hardware stores. And this goes from hot water to cold water. And just as easily you put the hot water into the pressure, the cold water into the vacuum. And then out of this, which a lot of these are made with that, you can pull out a whole tube um, and uh, with a head on it, and you just take the head off and you can use that tube. You could use that, put it in your mouth, and then it's gonna go back and forth. And you can do that manually, back and forth between pressure and vacuum. Now that is going to require a medical professional because the patient needs to be intubated for that that means that there's going to be a plastic tube that goes through the mouth and into the airway so that has to be done you don't do this at home so um, so this has to be done by a professional who's got to be trained in doing that uh, so that that's kind of an issue but what you can do with this is you can just 
simply hook it up to an electric drill and the electric drill can be connected to this and you can turn rotation into translation and it would move the handle back and forth or you could just remove the stops in there and the electric drill could be turned down to a certain speed you don't want to use battery operated because it would run out of battery unless you're right there to watch it and uh, and then that would go from pressure to vacuum and it would do both for you so that is your homemade ventilator and all these parts are available now the things that aren't available are the knowledge of of a medical professional as to how much air a person is going to need, what is the cycle, uh, what is their blood oxygen level. You can take an oxygen bottle um, and drill a hole in here and just feed oxygen directly into this as well. So if the, you need to increase the oxygen level from normal atmosphere about 21% oxygen up to 30%, 50% or 100%, depending on what the medical professional thinks is necessary, then um, you, you can do that fairly simply with this apparatus. Now this is only a short term fix until uh, some of the major companies like automotive companies uh, come out with enough um, ventilators that's gonna survive you know, and, and, and get out there to the, to the market. I'm not being endorsed by any one manufacturer. I'm not saying that this is something that's a finished product. I'm just trying to spur some ideas and get this video out into the hands of people who may be able to take this and run it, run with it and, and make a finished product. So my name is Gene Payson. I live in Sarasota, Florida, and I'm willing to continue on with these ideas. So if you'd like to make a comment below in this YouTube video, then I will continue on. Please give me some of your input and I will do my best. If you've got uh, other ideas and you want me to send you some parts or send you some drawings or do anything else, you just please contact me and I'll do my best to get back to you and help you out.